three youngsters were in the midst of a spirited debate to determine who had the swiftest dad. My dad is the fastest. Anya exclaimed excitedly. He's a builder and can chuck a brick off the fifth floor, race down the stairs, and catch it before it even hits the ground. That's nothing. Brad boasted. My dad is much faster. He's a professional archer and can target an arrow at a wolf's head, fire it, and then run and grab the creature before the arrow even lands. Incredible, exclaimed Tommy. But I think my father is way faster. What makes you say that, asked Anya and Brad curiously. My father has been working at the DMV for 20 years, Tommy answered. He's expected to be off work at 5 p.m., but he's so speedy, he's home by 1. A man suffered a serious heart attack and had bypass surgery. He awoke to find himself in the care of nuns at a Catholic hospital. As he was recovering, a nun asked how he was going to pay the bill. He replied, in a raspy voice, No health insurance. The nun asked if he had money in the bank. He replied, No money in the bank. The nun asked, Do you have a relative who could help you? He said, just a spinster sister, who is a nun. The nun, slightly perturbed, said, Nuns are not spinsters. Nuns are married to God. The patient replied, Then send the bill to my brother-in-law. A policeman is driving past a roadside apple stand when he notices the sign, Apple Seeds, guaranteed to make you smarter, $20 per seed. He pulls over and informs the vendor that it is fraud and false advertising to make absurd claims like this. No, 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 the vendor tells the cop, my apples are a special variety. A scientific miracle. Buy just one seed, eat it, and you will notice an increase in intelligence. If not, I promise to refund your $20. All right, says the cop. But if this doesn't work, I'm shutting your operation down. He hands over a $20 bill, takes the seed, chews it up, and waits for it to kick in. After a few moments, he says, you know, even if you're not lying, I could have bought a whole bag of your apples and had enough seeds to last me months. Ah, uh, yes, says the vendor. It's working already. A lawyer parks his sports car on the side of a busy road. As soon as he opens the door to get out, B.O.M., an 18-wheeler takes the driver's side door clean off. The lawyer gets out, sees the damage, and immediately starts cursing the world. Are you kidding me? I just paid them off. Top of the line everything, and now it is ruined. Why God, why me? As he continues on his tirade, a bike cop pulls up and says to the lawyer, you know, you're so concerned about your precious car that you haven't even stopped to notice that your arm came off the door. The lawyer, realizing that the cop was right, shouts, My God, Rolex! Two priests are going to shower in the male shower rooms. They undress and step into the showers before they realize there is no soap. Father Michael remembers he bought some soap the other day, and it's in his room. He goes to get it not bothering to put anything on in the quick jog. He grabs two bars of soap, one in each hand, and turns back. While he is halfway down the hall, he suddenly sees three newly inducted nuns going his way. In a moment of sheer panic, he stands against the wall and freezes like he's a wax statue. The nuns stop and comment on how lifelike he looks. The first nun suddenly reaches out and pulls on his manhood. Startled, he drops a bar of soap. Oh, look, says the first nun, it's a soap dispenser. To test her theory, the second nun also pulls on his manhood. Sure enough, he drops the second bar of soap. Now the third nun decides to have a go. She pulls once, then twice, and three times, but nothing happens. So she gives several more tugs, then yells, Holy Mary, Mother of God. Liquid soap too. A nun, Sister Sarah, wakes up one morning feeling great. She gets out of bed and decides to go to the kitchen for some breakfast. On her way over there, she runs into Sister Jane, and she says, 
Hi, Sister Jane. To which Sister Jane answers, I see you got off on the wrong side of the bed this morning, Sister. Puzzled, Sister Sarah did not understand what Sister Jane meant by that, so she ignored it and went on. She's passing by the garden when she runs into Sister Roberta and says, Good morning, Sister Roberta. I hope you're having a great day. Sister Roberta answers, Good morning, Sister Sarah. I see you got off on the wrong side of the bed today. Sarah was now really anxious to know why everybody she meets keeps saying that when she feels so great, and so she decides to go and see Mother Superior, who is in her office. She enters and asks Mother Superior, Holy Mother, everybody keeps telling me that I got off on the wrong side of the bed, but I feel great. The Mother Superior replies, That's because you have Brother John's shoes on. <laughs> Decades ago, two Irish nuns had just arrived in the USA by boat, and one said to the other, I hear that the people in this country actually eat dogs. Odd, her companion replies, but if we shall live in America, we might as well do as the Americans do. Nodding emphatically, the mother superior points to a hot dog vendor, and they both walk towards the cart. Two dogs, please, says one. The vendor is only too pleased to oblige, and he wraps both hot dogs in foil and hands them over the counter. Excited, the nuns hurry over to a bench and begin to unwrap their dogs. The mother superior is first to open hers. She begins to blush, and then, staring at it for a moment, leans over to the other nun and whispers cautiously, Which part did you get? <laughs> Pause the laughter for a moment. If you're enjoying these jokes, why not hit the subscribe button? Join our growing community of humor enthusiasts and never miss a hilarious moment. Subscribe now. An elderly woman visited a store that sold jade and requested 7 kilograms of potatoes. The owner was delighted to help and started packing the potatoes. However, the woman stopped him and requested that each potato be wrapped individually. The man complied and asked if there was anything else he could help with. The woman then requested that 4 kilograms of onions be wrapped in a similar manner. The shop owner packed the onions and asked if there was anything else. The woman requested 7 kilograms of carrots. Let me guess, said the owner with a sour face, you want them wrapped individually. Oh, that would be grand, she said. The shop owner fulfilled her request and packed all her items in a bag. The woman then asked, what are in those crates behind you? The man flushed red and said, Madam, these are grapes, and they are not for sale. Two nuns who worked in a hospital were out driving in the country when they ran out of gas. As they were standing beside their car on the shoulder of the road, a truck approached them. Noticing the nuns in distress, the trucker stopped and offered to help. When the nuns explained they had run out of gas, the trucker said he would be more than happy to drain some from his tank, but he didn't have a bucket or a can. Hearing this, one of the nuns dug out a clean bedpan from the trunk and asked the trucker if it would do. He said it would and proceeded to drain a couple of quarts into the pan. He then handed the pan to the sisters, got back into his truck, and waved goodbye. While the nuns were carefully pouring the precious fuel into their gas tank, a cop happened by. He stopped and watched them for a few moments then said, Sisters, somehow I don't think that's going to work but I sure do admire your faith. It was Sunday, and the preacher had just finished an inspiring church service when Rick, the wealthiest man in town, stood up and asked to address the congregation. The preacher wasn't surprised at this. Just make it quick, Rick. He sighs. Sure, Father, said Rick. He cleared his throat and addressed the audience. I can still recall the day when I earned my first dollar, he began. That same evening, I attended a church meeting where the speaker talked about his humanitarian efforts. At that moment, I had only that single dollar to my name, and I had to make a tough decision, give it to the speaker's cause or keep it for myself. I chose to donate it all, and I truly believe that God blessed that decision, which is why I am a millionaire today, he finished, a tear gleaming in his eye. Oh yeah? 
An old woman in the audience stood up and said, I dare you to do it again. The mother superior is very upset. She walks into the dinner room and announces to all the nuns to be quiet and listen. I was walking around the gardens as I do, she says in a loud voice, when I found some disturbing things. For one, I found a man's underpants. All the nuns are taken aback except for one, who is smiling. Then, continues the mother superior, I found a woman's underpants. All the nuns gasp together, except for one, who is giggling. And if that wasn't enough, I found a used condom. All the nuns gasp, and some turn white, except for one, who is laughing quietly. And in the condom, finishes Mother Superior, was a hole. All the nuns laugh, except for one, who is crying. <laughs> a big bus stops at a roadside eatery. The passengers flood inside the eatery, and as they take their respective seats, the driver calls the manager aside and explains. Look, sir, we're from the mental asylum down the road. I'm taking the inmates for a ride. When they're done eating, they will insist on paying with bottle caps like they do inside. Please humor them and accept their payments. I'll clear the entire check at the end. So, as each passenger finishes eating and pays with bottle caps, the manager solemnly accepts them. After they were all seated in the bus, the driver approached the manager, who presented the bill to him. The driver carefully scans the bill. Excellent! I'm grateful for your cooperation. You don't know how hard it is to handle these people. Now, would you have change for a hubcap? A man rents a room and pays extra on the condition the landlady prepares his work lunch every day. So on the first day, she packs him a sandwich on normal sandwich bread, using the last night's leftovers of meatloaf, adding in some fruit, and a bottle of soda. When he comes home, he politely tells her that it wasn't quite enough food for him. The next day, she makes two sandwiches, turkey this time, and adds a container of salad, some crackers and peanut butter, and a slice of cake. That night, he told her most apologetically that while the food was delicious, he found himself still hungry, and could she possibly put in a little more tomorrow? The next day, she uses long slices of sourdough bread to construct a pair of huge sandwiches, and includes crackers and peanut butter, chips and dip, and veggies and ranch dressing, and a whole two liter of soda. That night, he smiles very kindly, and tells her it was almost enough food. The next day, throwing caution to the wind, and idly wondering if she's feeding his entire workplace, she cuts a loaf of bread in half and stuffs it with pounds of meat and cheese, an entire head of lettuce, tomatoes, onions, other vegetables, sauces, everything. That night, he fixes her with a dry look and says, So, I see we're back down to one sandwich? <laughs> a French woman and a Spanish man had recently gotten married and moved to Spain. The woman could not speak Spanish so whenever she wanted to buy chicken legs, she would raise her skirt a little and show her thighs which the seller understood. One day, she wanted to buy bananas so she brought her husband with him. As her husband could speak Spanish. As Josh strolled along the street, he saw his buddy Michael striding along anxiously with lots of bags in his hands. Hey, Michael, is everything all right? You seem kind of jumpy. Michael set the bags on the ground and said, Yeah, I was just now at the state-of-the-art supermarket that they launched in the industrial part of the city. Oh. What's it like there? I heard it's remarkable. Kind of. Michael replied. Josh was amazed when Michael described the grocery store with enthusiasm, emphasizing the atmosphere of naturalness and genuineness. You could hear cows mooing and smell the barn in the milk section. In the egg aisle, chickens were cackling and the chicken coop was in the air, and it was even better in the vegetable section, you could literally hear the farmers and smell the fields, wow, that sounds incredible. Josh exclaimed. Well, yes, in principle, said Michael with a grimace, but this is the last time I'm going there to buy toilet paper. <laughs> On a very windy day. 
A rabbi was walking along when a strong gust of wind blew his hat off his head. The rabbi ran after the hat, but the wind was too strong. It kept blowing his hat farther and farther away. A non-Jewish young man, seeing what had happened, ran after the hat, caught it and gave it back to the rabbi. The rabbi was so grateful that he gave the young man twenty dollars and blessed him. The young man was so excited that he decided to go the race track and with the rabbi's blessing, he decided to check the program and place the entire twenty dollars on a horse. After the races he went home and recounted his very exciting day to his father. I arrived at the fifth race and looked at the program. I saw this horse named Top Hat was running. The odds on this horse were 100 to 1 but since I received the rabbi's blessing I'd bet the entire $20 on Top Hat and guess what? He won! In the next race, there was a horse named Bowler at 30 to 1 so I bet the entire amount of my winnings on him. And guess what? I won again. So did you bring the money home? Asked his father. No, said the son. I lost it all on the last race. There was a horse named Chateau that was a heavy favorite so I bet everything on him. And since Chateau means hat in French I figured he was a sure thing. You fool, said the father. Hat in French is chapeau not Chateau. Sighing to himself. The father then asked. So who did win the race? A real long shot, said the son. Some Spanish horse named Sombrero Da. <laughs> did these jokes brighten your day? Don't miss out on the daily laughter. Hit subscribe now and keep the good vibes rolling. Join the fun and stay entertained with us. Lady and the Farmer a farmer stopped by a hardware store and bought a bucket and a gallon of paint. Then he stopped by the feed store and picked up a couple of chickens and a goose. However, struggling outside the store, he wondered how to carry all his purchases home. While he was scratching his head, he was approached by a lady who told him she was lost. She asked, Can you tell me how to get to this address, please? The farmer said, Well, as a matter of fact, my farm is very close to that house. I would walk you there, but I can't carry this lot. The lady suggested, why don't you put the can of paint in the bucket, carry the bucket in one hand, put a chicken under each arm, and carry the goose in your other hand. Thank you very much, he said and proceeded to walk the lady home. On the way, he said, let's take my shortcut and go down this alley. We'll be there in no time. The lady looked him over cautiously and said, I am a lonely widow without a husband to protect me. How do I know that when we get in the alley you won't hold me up against the wall, pull up my skirt, and have your way with me? The farmer said, Holy smokes, lady. I'm carrying a bucket, a gallon of paint, two chickens, and a goose. How in the world could I possibly hold you up against the wall and do that? The lady replied, set the goose down, cover him with the bucket, put the paint on top of the bucket, and I'll hold the chickens. A philosopher, a mathematician, a chemist and a physicist were at coffee shop. The physicist turns to the chemist sitting next to him and says, You know, chemistry is just applied physics. They all laugh a bit at the chemist. The mathematician turns to the physicist sitting next to him and says, You know, physics is just applied mathematics. They all share a laugh at the physicist. At which point, the philosopher interjects, And mathematics is just applied philosophy. The laughter roars even louder. The mathematician turns to the philosopher and says, That's funny. Now shut up and bring me the coffee I ordered. <laughs> Great legs. The wife and I were in town shopping and as we came out of a store, three attractive young women aged between 18 and 20 walked by wearing tiny crop tops and short short skirts. One of them, a tall blonde, had really fantastic long toned and tanned legs. I gently nudged my wife and said, I bet you wish you still had legs like that. She got really upset with me. 
In fact I could still hear her sobbing as I wheeled her up the ramp into the next store. Thanks for the laughs. Subscribe for more fun. Until next time, stay tuned and stay amused. Goodbye, for now.